Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. A swimmer was rescued by a fisherman and his drone. Cal Norforce gets awarded a really cool award. We have Pierce Aerospace that partners with MITRE to provide remote ID research. Let's get to it. And first up, this week is a real-world Drones for Good story. This is, I think, the third week in a row that we're talking about one of these, uh, and they're always, always good to cover. Uh, this is out in Pensacola, Florida. On May 15th, a shark fisherman, his name is Andrew Smith, uh, found himself in a true life-or-death situation. Uh, he'd only been at this new fishing spot for about 10 minutes when he says that a girl ran up to him screaming for help because another girl was drowning, apparently caught in a dangerous rip current. Uh, Andrew, he says, had a, a, a seizure disorder, uh, which means that he couldn't really swim to go and help uh, the girl that was in the water, uh, but he saw the girl getting pulled further and further away, uh, pretty much struggling for about five minutes, and then he knew that he had to do something, time was critical. Uh, Andrew typically uses a drone for fishing, uh, specifically to position a bait further in the distance in the water, uh, because he says his medical condition makes it uh, makes using a kayak uh, unsafe and difficult. So he attached a flotation device to his drone. He told CBS 12 that that in his first attempt, uh, he was incredibly nervous. He said that he was shaking pretty badly, he said he was crying, almost crying. And he said in the stress of the moment, he released the device too early and it missed the girl that was in the water. But he didn't give up. A bystander quickly provided a second flotation device. And this time he flew the drone and then slowly and very and you can see it on the video, actually, very deliberately uh, lowered the uh, the device to the girl that was struggling. Uh, he saw that she could, you know, reach the device and then he released it and then she was able to grab it and uh, stay afloat. It reportedly took the first responders another five minutes to arrive on the scene. Local authorities, including the police, EMS and lifeguards, apparently told Andrew that if his second attempt had failed, she would have definitely not made it. I'm going to say, Andrew, good job on this. Uh, if you're watching, hopefully you're watching this and you want to learn more about drones. I don't know if you're 107 certified or if you want more training. I uh, would be more than happy to provide you with a free course of your choosing and, uh, and get you going for, uh, for helping this person right here. All right, next up, let's talk about one of our guest instructors who teaches the uh, search and rescue course on our platform, no other than Cal Norforce himself. Uh, he's more importantly the UAS team coordinator with the Weber County Sheriff's Office in Utah, and then he's also the UAS chairman for the Mountain Rescue Association. And this week, he snagged the Unsung Hero Award from the Global Search and Rescue Excellence Award in London. Uh, congratulations to him. Uh, let me tell you, he's this guy, he's doing some really cool stuff. Hey, and his team, obviously. He has a great team. Uh, we actually went to Utah to meet with his team. Uh, all amazing people uh, that do this, you know, in and out as uh, volunteers. And uh, what they do is just nothing short of amazing. And I know there's a lot of other departments that do the same thing, but he's using drones that are equipped with thermal imaging, you know, high resolution cameras to basically transform search and rescue uh, into things that used to take hours and even sometimes days into just being able to rescue people or at least find them within minutes. He's also experimenting with large drone operations, uh, leading the way into the future of drone operations in the country. Uh, we really have not seen a whole lot of people using over 55 pound drones to be able to drop off large equipment on the scene and just basically uh, help the uh, the people on the ground to do their job. So Weber County is the perfect place for all of this, covering a vast areas, sometimes several square miles that they have to research. And then uh, they have really rugged terrain, uh, elevation changes exceeding 5,000 feet. So uh, shout out to our good friend Cal, keep up the good work and everybody else in that team over there. Third, Pierce Aerospace and MITRE have announced that they're officially joining forces. Uh, they've signed a memorandum of understanding, basically a formal agreement to advance UAS and remote ID uh, for more complex missions. Uh, this is a way to use remote ID as kind of a piece of the puzzle into integrating a more complex operation into the national airspace system. Uh, I know remote ID doesn't always have the best reputation, but in this case, what this partnership means is that uh, Pierce Aerospace Space will be installing those sensors at the uh, MITRE National Range. Uh, that range is a hub for research that allows uh, academia, government, and industry to collaborate on prototyping and experimenting different things. Uh, together, they're going to work on broader airspace detection, UAS and autonomous flights, and even homeland security capabilities. I think this is actually a great use of remote ID. I think this should be the main focus for using remote ID is to be able to separate traffic in the air, different type of traffic in complex areas.
A few short stories to wrap things up. On the DAA side, Nebraska has passed two bills and they're now on the governor's desk. Uh, they're gonna repeal two of the country of origin bans that we've talked about in the past, uh, which is actually a good thing. Uh, we'll be discussing this and a few other state updates in more detail during post flights in the premium community. Also, we have Skyfish that has released the Osprey, which is a US made uh, drone, 13 pounds. It has a 50 minute flight time, 61 megapixel camera, ADX zoom, 3 to 5 mile radio link. Uh, another story that we're going to cover more in depth during post flight because we're kind of running out of time here. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. No live on Monday uh, for the holiday, but we'll be back on Friday for another news update. In the meantime, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. It's uncensored. It's yeah, wild. Uncensored. Jason, what negative things do you have to say about Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> no, that <laughs> doesn't get any airtime. We are completely off script at this point. I have to throw the notes out the window because we've gone off the rails. It's wild. Uncensored.